So in my RV, I have this cabinet here. It is almost useless. It's only about five inches wide at the opening. I measured from the front to back and it does go back about 16 and a half feet. Seriously, it's, um, it's pretty difficult to put anything in here and not have to pull stuff out to get to the stuff that's already in the back. So I came up with an idea and I figured I would share that with you guys. So in my cabinets here, uh, my pantry, I installed these wire pull-out shelf racks. I'll put a link to these down below in the video description. Um, so I wanted to put something that slid out similar to these over in this cabinet here, but I didn't necessarily want a wire rack. So I figured I could build a little box to put down there. So I was digging through all the junk in my garage that I had and I found this. This is a sliding hinge for a drawer on an old desk. Now this thing is pretty heavy duty. I remember it being on one of the bigger drawers that you pulled out. And I always save these kind of things uh, in case I ever decide I want to use them for something else. Now it was a vertical mounted slider, but it can also be used flat. So my intention is to put this inside, mount the box right on top, and this should slide right out. Now I know that not everybody has access to this type of hardware just sitting around in their garage. So if you look at the video description below, I will put some links to some sliding drawer or sliding shelf hardware so you can kind of see what's out there and what's available to use. So I've gotten my measurements and I know I want to make my drawer four and a half inches wide. That'll give me a quarter inch clearance on each side of the opening of the cabinet. I'm going to make it 21 inches deep in total and go about four inches tall. And I'll show you what this looks like in just a second. Now guys, I'm not a master woodworker and I'm not going to put dovetail joints on this drawer. But one of the reasons I made this video is because if I can make a drawer that slides out, you can too. It's very, very simple. So I cut the floor of the drawer out first. That's going to overlap all sides. Now, once I had all the pieces cut out, I just used some wood glue on the edges and then stapled everything together using a one inch staple. So as you can see, here are the dimensions of the drawer that I built. And if you look closely, you can see that the bottom floor of the drawer overlaps both the sides and the front and back. The front and back piece overlaps the sides. So next I took some 80 grit sandpaper on a sanding block and just ran it over the drawer a little bit to get any of the splintering off from cutting the wood and to round the edges of the drawer as well. Now we can begin to stain the drawer that we made. I'm going to use a Verathane Ebony stain. This matches pretty well. Another one that matches well is the Minwax Ebony stain. So I find it pretty easy to just put some rubber gloves on and use a paper towel to stain. Just make sure that you're getting the stain down in the cracks where the different sides meet. And usually one coat will do it. Now the cabinet I'm putting the sliding hardware into has a small lip at the front. So I have to put a piece of wood in as a riser to clear that front lip. So I'm going to stain that as well. It's a good idea to let this dry overnight. And next we'll start mounting the hardware. So it's the next day, our stain has dried and now we're going to test fit everything one more time to make sure we're all lined up before we go ahead and start mounting everything in. So the first thing I did was mount my slider bracket to my riser, um, or if you don't need to use a riser, you would mount this directly to the floor inside your shelf. But as you can see, you just put a couple screws in here. I just use really short wood screws one here, one here, and you'll have to push this all the way back to get that third screw in. I want to line this part of the slider bracket up so it's dead center in the cabinet opening. If you do have access to underneath 
your cabinet, you wanna just check to make sure there's no pipes, electric lines, or anything under there that you could puncture when you run those screws down through. So this is what the underside of my cabinet looks like, so I should be good. So first thing I did was inside the cabinet here, you could see the screws that go down in through the riser where my slider is attached. There's one right there, one right there. I'm also gonna put one up front. Then you're gonna to wanna to pull your slider out, position your drawer exactly where you want it, and put your screws up through the slider into the drawer from underneath. I have three spots where I can screw in. One's right back here, one's here kind of in the middle, and one is here up front. Now it's a good idea as you're putting these in, obviously, try to grab your, your drawer and your slider and hold them together. I'm going to put this last screw in. Make sure it's nice and tight. And now we'll give it a test run to make sure everything stayed nice and straight. Perfect. And now we have a pull-out drawer that's much easier to use, in my opinion, than the cabinet that we had before. Plus, you still have a little bit of storage over here on the side. Cutting board, owner's manuals, you know, things that are flat in nature. You still have a little bit of room over there on the side. I want to end the video by saying one more time that I'm not a master woodworker, but if you want something basic like what I put in and you're a little bit handy and have a couple tools, it's really not that difficult to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a like, and if you want to see more of our videos, click that subscribe button down below. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you soon.